Hi YouTube and happy Wednesday. I can say it's Wednesday now that it's past midnight Eastern Standard Time. Tonight I'm very excited to review for you all my favorite keystroke programmable calculator, the Texas Instruments TI-95 ProCalc that was first released in 1986. This was also Texas Instruments last keystroke programmable calculator. From the TI-95 onward, they would focus instead on graphing calculators like the TI-81, 82, 83, 84, and so on. And as you might realize, this was also, this TI-95 was the last Texas Instruments calculator to use a Texas Instruments processor, the TMS-7000. The TI-80 the TI Ser series graphing calculators use a Zilog Z80, more recently an EZ80 and ARM variants, and then the TI-89 and 92 used a Motorola, a Motorola 68000. Interestingly, though, the TI-95 used the TMS-7000 7, series TMS-70C46 running at 5 megahertz, it happened to be built by a Taiwanese manufacturer, not Texas Instruments, a manufacturer that's still around today known as Inventec. The TMS-7000 really blew its competitors from Zilog, Motorola, and Intel out of the water for a couple reasons. One was the SCAT technology that enabled putting more transistors in integrated circuit, and then a second was the user-deviable instruction set that made the processor quite versatile. It performs really, really well for an 8-bit microcontroller microprocessor of its era. That said, let me go ahead and, and open up my, my ProCalc. I have three of these. I plan on selling one. I'll show that later in the video. All of them come in this nice plastic case that has some feet on it and it's labeled as TI-95 ProCalc. And what we can see on the inside is the calculator on the bottom that can come out. You can use it outside the protective case, but it's nice to keep it from getting dinged up. And on the top, is a quick reference card. This is helpful on, for, on one side for programming, on the other side for general information. This tells you about different modes in order to, to partition the memory amongst programs, maximum program steps, registers, and, and file step, uh, space program steps for the default program that you would run, and then space for storing files. That's another thing that makes this, I think, a lot more advanced than other keystroke programmables. Definitely the TI-66 that I do like, and HPs, is you can store your programs as, your, uh, your programs as individual files instead of as just different partitioned, directly partitioned parts of RAM, and, you know, you jump to a step or to a label. There's information on tests, flags, file manipulation, memory operation examples, so handling registers, and then other program-related functions like flow control, labels, and going to labels, and so on. You can even make menus. One thing you'll notice is this isn't a one-line uh, LCD. It does have one line for most information, but it has a second one with five different menu options. You can create your own menus and Honestly, that's one of the best parts of the TI-95 interface. That the keyboard is pretty comprehensive and the menus are easy to use. You don't feel bogged down with menus like I felt on HP42 emulators. I don't have an actual HP42 to tell, but that was not quite as, as ergonomic as the TI-95 is. Functions in learn mode and then how to stop programs using break and then... Yeah, yeah, so is, is stop programs um, using the break function, and and you'll note you can use the halt function to, to stop a program altogether, and how to clear errors, and then check different settings. Now, if I take this card, and I gently, gingerly pull it out, and flip it, you'll see that it also 
tells you how to use the calculator. Let's look at this from left to right. You can do conversions. There's different number functions. Some programs with two inputs, that, and that uses the X to T switch, X register, swapping with temporary register. So both of those have your inputs for those functions, like getting permutations and combinations, least common multiples, greatest common divisors, and so on and so forth. Then on the right, you'll notice you can do one and two variable statistics. So even without the cartridges this included, of which there were three, a math cartridge, statistics cartridge, and chemical engineering cartridge, you can still do regressions. You don't need a statistics cartridge to do a linear regression on some set of data, which is pretty cool. Anyway, so that about wraps up that information card. Let's look at the TI-95 itself. From top to bottom, there's an on and an off switch, on and off, the main LCD. I will note a lot of these units suffer from LCD bleed. I'll point that out in, in my other one that I got because it had a, um, uh, not that one, uh, one that has an 8K RAM cartridge. It especially looks like the earlier ones do, and it probably just has to do with these being moved from one temperature to another. You might notice a little bit of of bleed on the bottom there, just a faint bit, but it's not to the point that it affects it, it, it affects functioning of the device. It apparently results from bad seal or maybe just age. I mean, these are 35, almost 40 years old now. But on the other hand, you know, I've seen HP 12 C's and 15 C's that don't have this problem. And honestly, HP calculators are a lot better constructed this machine just feels more powerful and than an HP 41. And as I'll explain in a bit, it's a lot easier to interface. You don't need HPIL peripherals that maybe used to be inexpensive, but now are extremely expensive. Anyway, so that's a little bit of discussion about the display and about the on off switch. On the right here is a cartridge slot. In mine, I have a mathematics cartridge. That's one of the three I mentioned. The AK RAM cartridge is apparently backed up with a lithium battery, but I still have to figure out how you how you'd remove that. The bottom part of the LCD is is for different menu options. As I mentioned, there's menu buttons F1 through F5. On the right is your number pad, arithmetic operations pad, scientific notation, and then parentheses. You have a second function and then inverse which is an interesting way TI did things that you would do, say, say inverse of LN would be E to the X, or inverse of log would be 10 to the X, and so on. Clear and CE for getting rid of a message, and then getting rid of, I guess, what's in immediate memory in the X register, and maybe the T register, I'm not quite sure. Going left to right run then on the bottom and you can see the math cartridge coming up there you get gamma functions integrals and all sorts of things in here matrix operations which is pretty cool uh, you can select a program from memory i don't have any oh clear see program oh oops so that's not going to work the trace mode on this thing is excellent. That's another thing I should mention. But anyway, let's get back to keyboard. Going left and right in, in learn mode mainly to step through your program. Uh, run old, which just shows what was initially on the display. That's interesting. It's not showing TI-95 ProCalc like it would if you didn't have a cartridge. Help for resetting settings. Alpha mode. It is a full QWERTY keyboard and has a bunch, a, a bunch of, of alphanumerics, like string, string functions here. Deleting, inserting, saying the cursor should be at a certain column and then merging the, a value into a message. That's really nice and I think a big advancement over, say, a TI-58 or TI-66 
as much as I love them, they're much harder to work with and slower than the TI-95. There's learn mode. Oh, here, let me get out of that. Uh, F4, enter. Um, oh, I need to press alpha again to get out. Okay. Yeah, there's a learn mode. And the programming model is, 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 pretty, is, is pretty cool. It's algebraic operating system, but you'll notice to program program it, you go from left to right, and it's like typing from, from left to right. Oh, it's a scrolling display. I could do, I don't know, x squared ln log, for example, and you'll see the program counter increase. Uh, I'll get to it in a moment, but it, right now the way the, the memory is partitioned is so that the program is a maximum of a thousand steps. If you're wondering, that's, that's a lot of steps. It has 125 memory registers and then file space of 5200 bytes and the default 8K of RAM on here, which is, if you're like me and you're used to keystroke calculator programming, that's, that's quite a lot. You can do a lot with that. Anyway, we can get out of learn mode with that. So still explaining the keyboard, I showed you some of the functions. Next above this is really just a bunch of, of menu functions. There's input output here for tape, printer, different devices, and so on. Files over here for manipulating manipulating the, the default 8K RAM or an 8K RAM cartridge. Manipulating files and, and directories there. Statistics functions. Conversions between different coordinates and, 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 and degrees and, and so on, degrees, minutes, seconds. Numeric functions, I really love the random number function. I use that a lot in games that I, I have run several games for this. There's uh, an integer part, fractional part, round, sine, least common multiple, I forget this, absolute value, and so on. Flags for Boolean tests. You can set a flag, reset a flag, or test a flag. It is a Turing complete machine. You can do indirect addressing, you can do conditionals, you can do branching, you can do loops, you can do subroutines. All of those are built in. You can do jumps. Let's see, extended functions, quadratic, cubic, and then this is super cool, sys. When you unprotect the system, now you get these three new functions here that let you write raw TMS 7000 assembly code. That is super cool. I knew that there was this ASM button here, but that's not at this ASM label, second uh, help. But that just will convert relative addresses into absolute addresses. Like GTLA turns to go to step uh, or byte 0138. I did not realize you could put in raw machine code in here. That is super exciting. As I'll show you in a bit, there is a port on this on the back. You could imagine projects like interfacing a DHT11 or something and collecting data in real time. Anyway, I'll, I'll talk about that after I'm done going through this the overview of the keyboard. Okay, so we have system on protect, so you can store a byte or call a byte or run an assembly routine at a particular location of ROM or RAM. Okay, so that was extended functions. Then there's list, uh, a list which just shows you uh, what's in registers. And then I press halt. Labels. But anyway, so you get the idea. So this is just showing. I forget ST. Oh, okay. So that shows the part of the settings. It's all, all of that for you conveniently. You can go through registers. As I mentioned, there's a really nice trace mode that you can set and unset. You see that over here. Um, okay, so that goes through that next row. Now you have trigonometric functions, logarithms, square, square root, 1 over x, y to the x, exponentials, all in that row. And then more things about register, and register manipulation over here. Exchange register, store in a register, recall, and increment a register. And then program control 
as well as storing data in statistics registers. I think this is hyperbolic. And then X to T, which is using the two registers you have on here. It's not like a RPN calculator where you have X, Y, Z, and T in a stack. You just have a two-level stack. Well, I'm I'm lying. There's there's more layers of the stack, but what you're what you immediately can see and access is the X and T registers. That's an X now. Twelve. I put in T. Put it back in X. T is a temporary register that's really useful for running functions that need two different arguments or for some temporary output when you're doing more complicated arithmetic in a program. Really useful function there. Let's see what else. We have the reset key up here. As far as second functions, there's program counter, uh, partition. That tells you 1,000 program steps, 125 registers, 5,200 bytes for storage. Let's do some examples of storing data. Let's take 1, 2, 3, and we'll store that in register 0, 0, 1. You can also use... You can also use uh, letters, letters and numbers. You can have an alphanumeric name for your registers. Now we'll do a call. That's interesting. Now with the system unprotect, I can set four values for the for the register. Anyway, there's also uh, register arithmetic to save you some keystrokes. Say you want to add something into a register. Let's say you want to add, oops, uh, take 56 and then add it to register 001. Now let's recall register 001. And you'll see we just added 56 to 123, but in one single keystroke. Oh, oops, okay. I might see if I can get, um, oh, it's, it's, it's unprotected now. I'll have to stick with that. Yeah, anyway, exchange registers and increment add one to a register. That's really helpful if you want to do a DSZ loop, for example, decrement and, and, and stop on zero, and maybe within it you want to increase the count of, of, of something else. Yeah, so there's there's loops and all kinds of program control. There's permutations. Let's try, try uh, what, what should I do here? N of 6, x to t. Oh, oops. 6, x to t, 2, second, hopefully this works. NPR, 30 different combinations there. Two picked out a six, and then six, x to t, and um, two. We'll do combinations, and as you can see, that is is a smaller value divide. It's it's also divided by two factorial. Anyway, so that gives you an idea of some of the functions you can use on here again plenty of storage even expandable up to 16k and for something like this that's really plenty the final thing i'll show you now is is how this is powered it runs on four aaa batteries oh wait i should oh it is off now uh it i've had the same batteries in this since the beginning of 2020 and it's running just, I haven't used this a lot, but it's still running just fine, which shows you how good the battery life is. It's estimated, I think, by TI at 300 hours. That's pretty good. Again, the RAM is plenty for what the kinds of programs you'd write with this. Very nice programming interface, and you can trace in real time each step and what is shown in the X register. So that's also very cool. Anyway, I just thought about how great the programming was from how great the batteries uh, how great the battery life is. I believe this is a backup battery. I'd have to double check. It might be a more special reset key, but that wouldn't make sense. I think that's that's a backup battery. You can see this machine was made in 1987. Let's zoom in on that. May 1987, model 984. Model number 984, that's a serial number. And then on the side is a contrast knob for the contrast of your 
LCD. And then on top, as I was talking about, is a 10-pin header that you can easily interface. I've taken a couple 10-pin female headers for Arduinos and, and bunched them together in there, and I can really easily breadboard this out. This is a dock bus connector, as you would see on the TI-74. In fact, you'll notice the design is pretty similar to a TI-74. Anyway, so that 10-pin uh, connector, we'll zoom in on again, connects to a CI-7 cassette interface, quite, quite rare, a TP, yeah, TP, um, or excuse, not TP, that's a thermal paper, PC324 thermal printer. You can daisy chain peripher peripherals too. It's the same pins, but not arrangement as, as a hex bus connector, which you would see on the TICC40 that maybe some of you have. Something really cool I've worked on that's been progressing nicely is a replacement for the cassette interface on this thing. I've developed a three-wire Arduino interface that will send and receive cassette pulses, all 5-volt TTL serial pulse width modulations, so different length pulses for zeros and ones. That, and again, an Arduino interface that will decode that into bits and bytes for a computer. This means you don't need the cassette interface, inter interface anymore, which is so great. It is slow, and right now I can only receive data on the computer, not send from the computer to the TI-95. That's a consequence of the baud rate I'm using, which is necessary to sample the PWM at, at high enough frequency, but is bad because I very quickly overrun the serial buffer on the Arduino Uno, which is 64 bytes. So I'm writing some, some bash script now to send 32 byte segments of programs in here. That will be so great and now your computer can save TI-95 programs with a really simple interface. You won't need to look for the parallel port dependent PC interface or the hex here which is super cool but a lot more expensive. Anyway, so that's about it for my review of the TI-95. I hope you enjoyed this video. I also very much like Calculator Culture's review. I have that in the description down below. His review is excellent, and he actually shows some examples of programs and, uh, and assembly language program programming. So keystroke and assembly language programming for the TI-95. And real quick, I'll show the one I'm selling. I will note that it has some LCD bleed, but it is completely functional otherwise, and it doesn't affect operation that much. I'll, I'll just show you here that when I turn it in, tur turn it in, <laughs> turn it on, you can still read the menus decently well, although there's, that, there's a bit of um, LCD bleed. I'm going to sell this uh, below the normal asking price on eBay and elsewhere for someone to enjoy, add to their collection. Anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. Please leave your comments and questions in the comments section down below, and like and subscribe as always. Thank you for watching.